Domain 4.4 Explain Security Alerting and Monitoring Concepts and Tools. So for our Domain 4.4 objectives, we're going to go over monitoring computing resources, how we do that. Then we're going to go over the different activities that are involved in actual monitoring and alerting. And then we're going to go over the different tools. So we're going to go over the different tools that we have available to do our monitoring and our alerting of if we're in compliance, if there's potential vulnerabilities. Talk about compliance, we're definitely going to hit on SCAP to go over how we can use that automation protocol to harden our devices to DISA STIGs and standards. Okay, so monitoring computing resources. So monitoring computing resources is crucial for maintaining security and operational efficiency. So we just want to make sure that our systems, our applications, and our infrastructure is being monitored. We're not just while also doing network flow and network monitoring and deep packet inspection, we want to look at the actual resources used on the individual hardware as well. Log aggregation. So log aggregation is foundational activity in security learning and monitoring. What we're saying here is in, in a modern enterprise or hybrid enterprise, we have remote users, we have tools in the cloud, we got service software as a service in the cloud, function as a service in the cloud, we have on-prem doing hybrid deployments, and then all of our different spoke sites. How can we, as a SOC team, without taking up the entire budget of the organization, do our log dives for all the big data that's crossing our enterprise? Well, we can't. The best thing to do is have a centralized place to aggregate all those logs. We can accomplish this by using SIME, like Azure Sentinel, or the big one Splunk, right? that's gonna provide us with that log aggregation, that's gonna allow us to index and look for patterns, maybe enable some AI and machine learning to do pattern recognition. We can also, this will give us real-time analysis, so we can look at logs in real-time as they're happening, kind of bridging between active and passive monitoring. And this can also help us with compliance and forensics on our devices. Alerting. So we need to define how we alert, okay? So learning is an essential component of security monitoring. So during the configuration, when we're configuring how we alert, we're going to take into account a lot of different things. One, our industry. Two, the severity. Three, does this alert that we're going to get notified about enable the business properly? I.e., does our on-call SOC analyst need to be pinged about every low-level threat? D, how do we integrate that into... How do we integrate alerting? What response tools do we have? Are we going to use SMS, Slack, call, email? So we have to think about this when it comes into alerting, and we want to make sure that we're tuning this correctly. Now, a lot of times people think that we should overkill alerting, alert for everything. Well, we, there's a human aspect to this, right? We have to remember that if we're getting alerts for everything, we may miss the important stuff. If we're getting alerts for every low-level security threat, we may miss the high security threat somewhere in the noise, okay? So scanning. So scanning is the proactive examination of systems, networks, and applications to identify vulnerabilities, misconfigurations, or compliance deviations. So we want to make sure our scanning activities include vulnerability scanning and detection, compliance checks, making sure that we have auditors come through and make sure we're compliant, and also our patch management systems. Something that I think gets hit on almost every domain is patch management, right? Reporting. So how do we report effectively? So we want to uh, do performance metrics, trend analysis, and incident documentation. So with reporting, this involves the creation and distribution of comprehensive reports that provide insights into security posture and operational status of our IT environments. So like my CTO, he gives me reports on our website. He gives us reports on the downtime of how many errors there was, the trend analysis. We've had users at this time. These are our peak hours. And if there's ever an incident, do we have the documentation? And is it sent out to the correct stakeholders? Archiving. So are we doing archiving correctly? So that's the process of storing historical data in a secure and organized manner. So this is going to get into data retention compliance, right? What does the business say our data retention policy is? What's our guidelines for it? What is it? How does it go over logging, right? Because we're doing monitoring, whether it's passive or active. We're looking at logs or real time. How do we archive those logs? 
if that log was part of incident response, maybe that's more, uh, maybe we define that different and we archive it different than logs that are just benign, right? That are all just true negatives. And then we go over, do we back up our archives? If we have some legal and regulatory requirements, that's going to affect how we do archiving and how we back that up, how we recover it. Do we apply encryption? So alert response and remediation slash validation. So alert response and remediation slash validation are critical activities in the incident response process involving the assessment, containment, and resolution of security alerts. So what we're saying here is during incident response, when we first get alerted, we're going to want to go in and make sure that it is a real incident. So scanning our flags, doing our analysis. And then if it is, what's our response? Do we have playbooks and run books that tell us how to respond to this incident? So what kind of quarantine are we going to do? Are we isolating? Are we containing? Is those Are those alerts tuned properly? Okay. We want to reduce our false positives. How are we doing that incident analysis? How are we determining whether it's a false positive, true positive, true negative? Do we have a standard for that? Are we just relying on the, the cybersecurity engineer to say, I've seen this before, right? Do we have signature files? Do we have heuristics set up? Pattern behavior analysis. And then of course, if it is an incident, we did our proper analysis. We went through the uh, forensics, right? We did our chain of custody. Now what's our resolution? How do we recover it, okay? So how do we resolve the security incident and how do we restore that system? All right, guys, let's go ahead and do our quiz. Let me bring it up. All right, domain 4.4, alerting and monitoring, compute resources and activities. So question one, why is log aggregation important in security monitoring? This is going to be to consolidate logs from multiple sources for easier analysis. Like, you know, just imagine if you had to go through every single endpoint to include printers, VTC machines, uh, 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 VoIP systems, right? Laptop, mobile phones. You do log diving and all that. There's no SOC team in the world that can do just pure endpoint log analysis by just looking at each individual log. There's no way, right? We need some sort of log aggregation. And this is to include all of our infrastructure, our network infrastructure, our server infrastructure, even our cloud infrastructure. Question two, what role does reporting play in security alerting and monitoring? So that's going to be B, to document and analyze the details of security alerts and incidences. So you want to make sure that you're doing proper documentation and analysis of the security alerts and incidences to be you know, distributed, to be given out to all the stakeholders in the, in, the, in the enterprise as well. Question three, why is alert tuning important in a security operations center? Because we want to reduce the number of false positives. That's one. We don't want false positives. And we want to improve alert accuracy. We don't want to get lost in the noise, right? There's a human element here. We don't want to get alerted of 20 true positives a day because you probably just fine tune that a little bit too much, your pattern behavior analysis probably isn't working as well as you think, right? Question four, what is the primary purpose of system monitoring in cybersecurity? So that's going to be C, to detect, alert, and respond to potential security threats. So pretty simple, right? Why do we monitor? We monitor because we want to be proactive. We want to make sure that we're detecting, getting alerting properly, and that we're doing the incident response if needed in a timely manner. Question five, in the context of alert response, what is the purpose of quarantining a system or application? That's going to be B, to isolate, prevent the spread, right? Anytime we quarantine, isolate, contain, it's all just to stop it. Stop that incident right there. Let's perform our forensics. Let's make sure we're doing our correct order of volatility when doing our artifacts, right? Recovering our artifacts. And we need to quarantine to be able to do that properly. Question six, 
What is the primary objective of setting up alerting mechanisms in cybersecurity? That's going to be B, to generate notifications for potential security incidences. 